A sharp chisel is not only easier to use, but safer too, for the same reason as a sharp knife. But sharpening chisels, or plain irons for that matter, takes time and effort, especially if you're doing it all manually on sharpening stones. Well, Rockler's grinding and honing jig can help you do the time-consuming grinding step faster and easier on your bench grinder. Then, use the same jig for honing a razor-sharp micro-bevel. In this video, I'll show you how to put this system to use to sharpen a chisel. Let's start by taking a closer look at the jig. The system consists of this adjustable aluminum and steel grinding jig with a sliding carriage on top. And there's a precision honing guide that fits into the slider for holding chisels or plane irons. And this tray holds these three plastic angle gauges that fit into the honing guide, like this, for adjusting the jig to the grinding wheel. Rockler's instructions will explain how to mount the grinding and honing jig to a piece of three-quarter inch plywood to create a permanent workstation for sharpening. The jig will work with any six or eight inch bench grinder you may already own. A grinder doesn't come with the jig. Here, I've got an eight inch low speed bench grinder with an 80 grit aluminum oxide grinding wheel installed on it. Before I set up the jig, the first step when sharpening any chisel or plane iron is to make sure the back of the blade is flat near the cutting edge. I do that on a fine grit sharpening stone, flattening about the first inch or so of the blade. This grinding and honing jig will sharpen chisels and plane irons to the three most common primary bevel angles, which are 20 degrees, 25 degrees, and 30 degrees. And here's how we determine which of those bevel angles we need. These three plastic angle gauges have a beveled notch molded into their back ends. Here's 20, 25, and 30 degrees. My Rockler chisel here that we're gonna sharpen is brand new with a primary bevel that comes straight from the factory. Let's see what it is. The bevel fits right into the 25 degree angle gauge. So this is the gauge we'll use for setting up the jig to sharpen the chisel. The aluminum jaws on this honing guide open and close with this knurled knob and they'll hold chisels or plane irons from a quarter inch up to two and three eighths inches wide. So our next step is to install the angle gauge and tighten it. The roller on the honing guide fits into a cradle on the sliding carriage. And the goal is to adjust the jig until the two touch points on the angle gauge make contact with the grinding wheel, like this. I've already adjusted my jig to the 25 degree angle we need for sharpening this chisel. But the process for making that adjustment involves loosening two knobs that secure the arms in position and moving the jig assembly up or down until the touch points of the angle gauge make contact with the grinding wheel, then tightening the knobs again. You may also need to change the position of these arms on this squaring plate, move them up or down, or move the base of the jig backward or forward on its slotted holes. And that'll depend on how large the grinding wheel is, how high the grinding wheel is up off the base, and even how long the handles of your chisels are. It's a geometry that's gonna take some time to fine tune initially. Now that the jig is dialed in, we're ready to take the angle gauge out of the honing guide and install the chisel in it. Now there's one more adjustment to make. We need to adjust the blade to the correct projection. And to do that, we're gonna use the stepped portion of this tray. It's marked 20, 25, and 30, and those represent the projections of the blade out from the honing guide. So, with the chisel loose in the honing guide, we'll slide the blade forward until it makes contact with the 25 degree projection, and so the front edge of the honing guide is flush against the front edge of the tray. Then tighten the honing guide. This is the correct projection for a chisel or plane iron with a 25 degree primary bevel angle. We're almost ready to grind that primary bevel but it's a good idea to color it first with a dark permanent marker so we can gauge our grinding process. And put some water in the blue plastic reservoir on the tray so you can dip the blade into it during grinding when the steel gets hot. And now, we're all set to start grinding. To do that, set the honing guide onto the sliding carriage clear of the grinding wheel and turn on the grinder. Then with the chisel blade raised up high enough to clear the wheel, Slide the carriage over in front of the wheel and tip the honing guide forward until the blade makes contact with the wheel. 
Begin to slide the carriage back and forth on the wheel in a smooth, even motion and trying to always keep a portion of the blade on the wheel. After you've been grinding for 20 or 30 seconds or so, shut the grinder off and take the honing guide off the jig so you can assess your progress. Let's take a closer look at how ours is coming along. So far, this is looking really good. The grinder is removing an even amount of steel from the face of this bevel. But if this marker line right here were really crooked, we'd want to adjust the base of the jig to make sure that the front edge of the carriage of the jig was parallel to the face of the grinding wheel. But that's not going to be an issue here. What we want is for this grinding line to be parallel to the cutting edge of the chisel. Continue grinding until all the marker is removed from the bevel. Cool the blade as needed to keep from overheating the steel, which could soften the cutting edge. You don't want the steel to change color, which indicates its temper has changed. So use a light touch when pushing down, keep the carriage moving, and cool the steel as needed. Well, that takes care of the grinding step, and all the marker is now gone. So let's take a closer look at the primary bevel now. The curvature of the grinding wheel has created a hollow depression in the primary bevel right here. This is called a hollow grind. And while this edge seems pretty sharp already, under a microscope it's actually very rough. So now we can move on to the second step of the sharpening process, honing. That's where we take this microscopically rough edge and turn it into a razor sharp edge. And for that, you're going to need a fine or super fine grit sharpening stone. I'm going to use this 1200 grit diamond stone from Rockler. There's no need to remove the chisel or plain iron from the honing guide at this point. Just set the bevel of the blade down onto your sharpening stone and pull the honing guide back towards you. The roller on the guide makes this easy. Repeat for 20 strokes or so. Then stop and take a close look at the cutting edge on the bevel. You should see a narrow glint of light along the cutting edge like this. This is the micro bevel and it's the super sharp cutting edge you're after. Once you've established a micro bevel, give the back face of the blade a few strokes on the sharpening stone to remove the burr that's formed there. And that completes the honing step. Now the advantage to a micro bevel isn't just a keen cutting edge. It also makes the sharpening process easier next time, because as long as the edge doesn't get chipped during use, you can skip straight to the honing step. You don't have to regrind the primary bevel every time you sharpen. Just rehone it to restore the micro bevel. Rockler's grinding and honing jig can add some power tool performance to your sharpening process, helping you form hollow grinds and micro bevels on chisels or plain irons quickly and easily. You can see it at your local Rockler store or learn more at rockler.com. I'm Chris Marshall with Woodworkers Journal Magazine and Rockler. 